Two covers through the middle. Adi up for three. Hello Hockey World and welcome back to the New Zealand Heritage Hockey Tournament 2024, the place where culture and pride hit the turf and some of the best players in the country have the chance to stand up and represent their heritage. We're coming to you live from the National Hockey Centre here in North Harbour, home of the North Harbour Hockey Association and of course home of the New Zealand Black Sticks. It's the final day of the tournament today and there's no better way to finish Easter weekend then with the medal matches and upcoming the gold medal matches here at Heritage Hockey 2024. I'm Brad Pittman, have been with you this whole Easter weekend, bringing you all 16 games of the Heritage Tournament 2024. Thanks, of course, to the major sponsor, One Foundation. I'm joined in commentary this afternoon by Oriwa Hepi, friend of the shows, New Zealand Indian, Mouldy, Fives, Indoor, Hepi Sports, the whole rest of it. Oriwa, welcome back. Uh, hello, it's a... Uh bittersweet reason for me to be up here with you today Brad um, with the Indian ladies uh, just not managing to take away the win against the uh, heritage side yesterday but um, oh, what a platform an amazing platform we have to celebrate the cultural diversity and cultural identity in the heritage tournament we do have a battle of strength and power between these two sides today both teams well known for their physical strength and presence on the field and not to forget their strong ball carrying abilities um, we have some well-known players out there today, but more interested, Brad, in what you think of the, the young and, and talented players coming through. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a showcase for some of the next generation of, of superstars, really, in our game. Uh, as we see the two captains here, of course, it is the women's gold medal match between the New Zealand Heritage Barbarians and the New Zealand Junior Māori side. Our umpires, Connor Walsh and Nikki Hayes, there in the pink. But you're right, Oriwa, two teams with pretty distinctive um, styles. They love playing physical, they love going forward, they love having a crack. Uh, but your highlight of the youth is what is really exciting across these two teams. Of course, representing New Zealand Māori this year is the junior outfits, uh, but also this Heritage Barbarian side full with um, that under 18, under 21 age players as well. So it's uh, four games in four days. The youth and the legs is going to help come the end of this one, no doubt. Uh, and it'll be a, a real battle out there to see which team can control things through this final. <laughs> now, you mentioned a bit of uh, unfortune uh, for your NZISA ladies. Uh, I've got to say I, with much regret, had to message you last night to ask if you'd be able to join us for this gold medal match after you ladies came up just fractionally short in a penalty shootout. Uh, and then had a real arm wrestle this morning. But talk us through um, a really successful tournament despite the results for your NZI ladies. Yeah, I, that's correct, Brad. Despite what happened out there today, there's been a massive uh, increase in, in just knowing each other and knowing the players in our team, but also out here for this um, heritage team as well. And for the new Asian team that managed to score to secure their first win of the tournament and that's amazing to see because that they've just developed as the tournaments come forward uh, and and the only team that just needs to try and hold hold their strength and hold their position here is this New Zealand Māori junior side against uh, a very strong physical actually quite experienced older heritage side yeah that's it you mentioned they're the ones that have to hold the ground they come in unbeaten uh, they won this match up uh, two days ago, I believe 4-3, um, as we do look at some of the sides here. Um, you talk about the experience, it's hard to go past the likes of Kayla and Tori Val, who will play around the back. Vic Methvin, another one for this Heritage Barbarian side, who's uh, really guided the youth of this Heritage Barbarian side around the park. Um, the other one, and I know she's not that old, but with a bit of wisdom too, is Tiana Curry, um, the young Northlander who's out there playing for the Heritage side. Um, she adds her two cents as well. Yeah, young Northlander, also new mum, mm -hmm. mama. So it is amazing to see her out there and just still being confident in what she does well. You know, the mobility is never going to be the same as well, once you've had kids, but just to be confident in what you know that you're good at is good to watch her. Yeah, and that is her over there with a couple of early touches, Tiana Curry. 
This is the Val sisters at the back, Tori and Kayla. One thing I'm sure we're all looking forward to is a penalty corner strike from Kayla Val if they get the opportunity. Oh, wow, well red. One, yeah, cut out by Murphy Phillips. Yeah, that, that's a young player that I've been impressed with over these this weekend is her just presence on the field. She She's quite fast and she gets into good spaces without you knowing that she's going to be there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think she's going to be one that you see take the leap to the senior Māori team very quickly uh, and become a, a long-term member of that side for years to come. Murphy Phillips really proud to always be representing at Māori tournament and then again at these heritage fixtures for New Zealand Māori. So don't... Uh, don't be surprised to see her name start to crop in some senior discussions moving forward. And that's going to be an interesting little matchup over there. Ella Layton and Murphy Phillips, the two there on the ball. Um, Oriwa, you know a fair bit about Ella playing some NHC with her. Yep. Um, what sort of player is she? She, she's a fast, quick moving forward player. If you shut down her options really quickly, you should be able to contain the threat that she has going forward. Um, and actually what these Māori girls should be able to do really well is just pass the ball really swiftly between their options. Yeah, it's something we've seen uh, really well is the midfield work from this New Zealand Māori team, especially when Holly Hilton-Jones pushes herself into that midfield and becomes part of the attack with Roy Mata Brown, uh, with Penelope Talofo, Murphy Phillips there. They're all players that can take good options. They're probably... Uh, Thought they'd won a free hit there. They'll get it in the end through Roma to Brown. Yeah, and I think this Māori team just needs to be wary of the strength that they have at the top of the circle. I know that's definitely a, a something that we needed to have probably paid more attention to in our game is, is going around the width because their strength, they've got some massive pose in the middle of the field there and we just need to go around them. Yeah, that's it. And, and part of that is um, starting to gain some experience in the game, but it's also fourth game in four days. The legs don't quite run as wide as they used to. You don't get to those areas as easily. So uh, the, the teams out here are really going to have to put that extra bit in to make sure they stay in good shape and, and avoid just trucking up the middle of the field. Yeah, yeah. yeah here's a uh, ball at the back. Patience but from the... Junior Māori's, and there's a good pick there. Roy Mata Brown. And again, we talk about matchups. Roy Mata Brown v Kaya Elliott on this side of the field. It's a midfielder's dream out here at the moment. Yeah, yeah, they're two speedy players, and Roy Mata Brown definitely likes to, to use her skill. That's, that's her strength mm. in, in her game, is to just try and jam people. And Kaya Elliott, you know, she's going to stay in the tackle for as long as she can. Yeah, real tough uh, player. Started in the, at Heritage Tournament as an outside defender for the Pacifica women's side four years ago. And then injected her way into the midfield. And now uh, really standing up for this Heritage side. Well, some danger coming forward for this Heritage team. But nicely cleared up and into the midfield for the Maldives. Now here you're talking about the Holly coming forward providing some options and she finds Garby in the middle of the field and that's an awesome play to find. Yeah, those two working together could be real dangerous. Elliot there with the reach, Hilton Jones, the oh. battle goes the way of Elliot. What do we, we've got a pretty staunch uh, Māori support crowd in front of us at the moment in the commentary box. We always do. <laughs> that's the one good thing about having this Māori team is they've got Totoko for days. Yeah, and it's a pretty... Um, it's a pretty staunch Taitukuro crowd here as well. Uh, a number of these young ladies, representatives of Taitukuro, and they always just travel the two hours down the hill here uh, to North Harbour to cheer on this New Zealand Māori side. Here's one of them, Grace Hilton-Jones. She's off, still Tacked. going. She's found a foot. Still going. Here comes Brown using those skills. Beats one, beats two and three. Beats Fight the fourth. The oh, and it's over the baseline. I think that's a pretty fortunate call to not uh, get the PC in that one. But Yeah, let's have a look at this replay. Count them out. Roy Mata Brown, one, two, two and three, three at the same four, time. Four five. and five. <laughs> and then Ahu Mairangi Rahuruhi just couldn't get it over the line. Ella Leighton cleaning up for the Heritage side and 
early signs here from this Māori team. Yeah, Gabi just unable to collect the ball at the end of her stick. It was running away from her, so she had a last stitch effort to try and get that in. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, real danger here. She's only just come onto the field, Gabi Smith, and been in the mix for everything going forward already. Yeah, so at the start of the game, the, the junior side was half-court pressing almost, but they've pushed their press right up the field now and have turned it over after the first pass. Yeah, she's the sort of player, Gabi, you like her receiving the ball high up the field in good areas so she can have a crack one person and then her circle entry. Um, so no surprise that we've seen. This is uh, this little play that Gabi Smith nearly put away. Just missed the end of it there. As here come the Heritage Barbarians. This is Brooklyn Burton. Burton scored that uh, heartbreaking goal against your ladies yesterday. Audi were in the final few minutes yeah well-timed goal from her and that last two minutes it was just it was what they needed here's Leighton oh that was that was actually quite nice and here Talk. is the captain yeah, yeah no, she's definitely a po in the middle for that Maori team yeah, I've been really impressed by her um, this weekend, Penny. She gets around the field. She's uh, a good communicator, really gets her players in good areas, leads by example, um, and really good representative for New Zealand Māori hockey this weekend. Yeah, uh, th this junior Māori team's got some danger coming forward. They seem to be turning over the ball a lot in this midfield area. The one thing that I'd like to see them provide more of is, is just some height in the circle and along the baseline so then you can when we get those balls going through you can actually collect them yeah absolutely somebody like um ahura who them sort of players who can get up nice and high have the indoor skills to be able to eliminate a player where they need to trap a, a, a ball on the dot um same with shanara marshall who's just coming from the field at the moment uh, but these sort of players that can yeah really stretch the game out get in behind the defensive group here for the heritage team Here's uh, Karamea Leaders. Oh, it's taken quickly by Murphy Phillips. That's heads up hockey. That's good hockey, that is. Wins another one there from Kai Elliott. And she'll march forward. And that's not the option there. Unfortunately, you'd like to see them build up a little bit better than that. Yeah. And forward come the Heritage team. And a little bit of a sandwich there was Anna, Anna Rose Elliott. Yeah. That's some experience up the front there that they um, they utilised really well and they yep. utilised it in our game too. Yeah, she's uh, I mean one of the leaders of their attacking group, of course, with some of the younger players up there, Riley Grills, Brooklyn Burton, uh, that we've spoken about. Yeah, Hannah Rose, you'll see this entry from Kai Elliott in reverse. It's always good to see her walking backwards. And Daniela Hall there. It's interesting, these last two or three outlets from the, uh, or for the New Zealand Māori team, they've just struggled to get anything going forward. Yeah, I mean, the utilising the back pass can just, or watching this, so if you, I don't know if anyone just saw this, but yep. you shape to give it back and you get Hannah Roselia to run off that line, and then you just play it through her line. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's... Uh, yeah, you can split the strikers there. You've got to be pretty confident in doing it because you underhit it and it's danger signs at the top of your own circle. Yeah, but the, the the skill of just using your body is a massive skill. You can move players just by the way that you stand, Brad. Yep, yep. So this is a skill that hopefully they can look back and have a look at this and see how they move players by just turning around. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's about being versatile on the ball, having all of your options open and then yeah, being able to shape different directions is uh, this is a little bit better shaping here from the Heritage Barbarian side. They've got players up nice and high at the moment in Krofsky and Burton. Oh, and they've got some massive flickers. That's a bomb. Here comes Burton. She's got two players with her. Lovely pass. Circle entry through the top. Georgia. Junior Maldives have numbers back. Here's Krofsky trying to link back up with Symes. Grills. Oh, lovely tackle. Excellent work there by Murphy Phillips. I She's love done that again. body position, yeah. McConnell and Hall down the sideline. 
That one's cut out by Kayla Val, and the Maldi team will move themselves forward. But like you say, Uriwa, you'd love to see a couple of players just up around the baseline here as, as second layer targets for this Maldi team. I do know as a player myself, if you are that high one, you, you often feel like you're doing nothing. Yeah. But man, when those balls end up rolling down there and you're the only one there. That's it. That's it. Often we see strikers just hovering around that top of the circle type area thinking the, the million dollar shot's going to come from the rapid fire spots uh, that we use in, in warm ups. But the key <laughs> really is off the baseline. And picking up the second chance. Tiana Curry's up the field. She's going to have a dig here. Finds the free hit and just slows the play down. Let two players behind her come and collect the ball. Love this little positional shift from Tiana. Primarily played around the back all weekend. That's going to beat them all over the baseline. I'm just looking at him. Uh, Vic Methvin, eh? Did her, her stroke, oh, her shootout yesterday. <laughs> yeah, wasn't it something special? Oh, wasn't it great? Oh, cheeky little number. If you didn't watch it, go and see the replay. But long story short, uh, walked in and flicked one over the top of Kashona Tapachetri, landed it in the goal on the full. Takes some real skill to be able to do that. Yeah, and I rate our goalkeeper oh, as one yep. of the top goalkeepers here. But, oh, oh man. She, you know, sometimes it takes an older player to tell you to just this is the this is what you need to watch out for. Yeah, that's really showing some some smarts from Vic Methvin. She knows that Kashona moves well. She knows she likes to get out of her goal and challenge and and be in the contest. So perhaps just seeing a little bit of space in behind and again you can think that all you like, but then to execute it. Oh yeah, absolutely, and get it in the goal. Yep, yeah. I've seen so many people do it and go over the back. Um, go or, over the top. Yep. Yep. And uh, no, on a dime, Vic Methvin, and it, it booked their spot here, really, in the, uh, in the gold medal final. We won't talk about what happened moments before that. Oh, Oriwa, please but, uh, don't. <laughs> a tough shootout, I'm sure. It is. <laughs> hey, can I just mention this on what's happening in this game today? There's been multiple players on this field that are confident and giving good overheads into yep. good space. This is not a skill that we see commonly in women's games, so it's amazing to see it executed well out yeah, here today. Yeah, that's it. And I think the way that the game is developing too actually lends itself to more from the women. Traditionally, overheads were just... 60 meter bombs from the biggest dude out the back to relieve some pressure. Now it's really being used as a target pass, one layers, cross fields, those sorts of things, which brings the women's range, I think, into play a lot more. So you do see that sort of 20 to 30 meter one. And we see an attack here from Garby Smith. She's got the entry, she's got the transfer. Oh, they have Nobody numbers there. in the circle too, but they're just not in, not collecting it. Yeah, not quite in those areas. Little half trap there from. Trinell Woods I'm going to give a shout out to Trinell. It's her birthday today. Oh. Happy birthday, Trinell. Happy hoodie too. Yep, absolutely. She'll hate us saying that, and I know half the crowd sung to her before the game, but. Are you no. going to out her with her age today, Brad? <sighs> well, no, no. I don't think there's anything embarrassing. She's only still young, Trinell. And look at that. Long handle. Grace Hilton Jones. No, it's so happy birthday, Trinell. Uh, one of those. Young Taitukido ladies out here representing this weekend. Hope you uh, ladies can get yourselves a win on your birthday. In that one goes Pia Hohepakuka. Couldn't get a hold of it. As we get into the last three minutes, nothing yet beating either goalkeeper. We're still nil all in our women's gold medal match, the grand final here at New Zealand Heritage Hockey 2024, and Shinara Marshall judged just to be illegal, the tackle there on Ateda Hotufego. Oh, that's a hard yeah, pass to collect tough. in the middle. Yeah, real tough from Kaya, for, for Kaya Elliott. Take oh. that one, yeah, there's Shinara Marshall She'll go for it again if it's on. <laughs> and even <laughs> if it's not, she loves that spin. Oh, I, j I just like seeing new skills being executed on the field. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. It's all about flair, man, and what you can bring to the game. And look at that. That was, that was a lovely little just pull it back into your own body space. We'll talk about some new skills. I don't know if you saw the uh, NZ Fiji versus NZ Indian men's uh, shootout yesterday. 
Oh. But wasn't there some uh, absolute doozies in that one? What do uh, I think um, the triple spin from Rocco Ludolf. Oh, right? that was successful. Yeah, and I thought that was one of the best ones until Dan Scanlon. Scanlon did the oh. kick. Oh, I've never seen it before. He told me he's actually scored a goal from it before. That is outrageous. Yep. Stick in under the ball, kicks the stick, ball goes flying, and oh, it was otherworldly. I was talking to Dylan no, Patel. No, not even close. No. But down that end, though, what is close to the goal is the Heritage Barbarians ladies earning themselves a penalty corner here through Hannah Roselia. Just got in behind Grace Hilton Jones there. Isabella Holt just chilling up around the dot, see if she can uh, hear what they're saying in yep. their huddle. Quite like that. That's it. Listen to any secrets the attackers might uh, might have going on. And uh, I don't know if it's a secret we need to know, but Kayla Val's up there. And it goes to Val. It's untidy, though. Good pull, but just uh, no communication at the top between the trapper and the shooter. Yeah, yeah. Kayla kind of went for it herself, and Krofsky was still down in there. Hopefully a little better execution this time for the Heritage Barbarians. Here it is, Val. Oh, my goodness. I can It's a see rocket, that. early log, great save by Isabella Holt, and out they go. They've got the numbers side. forward if they can... Yeah, just a little slow there. Yeah, there, there is a skill to, to be had if you can... Oh, we've got the height. Ahu Mairangi Rahuruhi. No, it's just beaten her over the sideline. Those were the areas you talk about, though. Yes. Urua. Absolutely. And when we when you have the height, that would have been Ahu Mairangi versus the keeper. Yep. would have been. Uh, I would have loved to see that. Ahu, part of the uh, New Zealand indoor system. Might have seen some of those silky skills that I know that she's got from the hard top. Yeah, absolutely. And that is the uh, the hooter there for our first quarter. Just like that, it seems to have gone so fast here. The first quarter of the women's gold medal match. It's in the books and still locked up. Nilo, what, what do you like from this one? Oh, I, I think that, that the New Zealand Junior Māori team have been giving giving a lot going forward, but they haven't really put much, much pressure on Holly Landon, the goalkeeper, and so she hasn't really been injected too much into the game with shots like this just going wide. I would like to see them get a bit more accurate or just challenging Holly. Yeah, you see that one good save there. You're right, she hasn't had to do a huge amount. Neither goalkeeper really have. Um, there's been ball in and around the areas, but just nothing really troubling those goalkeepers too much. Yeah. Uh, a couple of penalty corners have, have looked a little bit messy, uh, both sides. Uh, but yeah, that's the final. That's what often happens in these sort of crunch games. And um, it's no surprise that we're still locked up. These are two teams that won't take a step backwards at all. Yeah, yeah. And and it's kind of, it's nice. Eh? It's nice to see that they, they both want it so really badly. We haven't really seen a slowdown of play from either teams yet. Um, hopefully we won't see it at <laughs> yeah. all. Um, but... You know, they've got a lot to fight for. This will be the first time if the Junior Maldives come through and win. Um, and also, it's the first time the New Zealand Heritage team have been even in, in a tournament with a mixture of players that have previously played in this tournament before. Um, and I just, it's, it's going to be cool to see what comes with this. Yeah, that's it. So um, for those that have been with us for the four years of, of Heritage, there was a, a Barbarians type team in, in year two of the tournament um, so both these teams making their first final their first opportunity to take home um, you know the trophy and, and the winning gold medals from the tournament and it's at the moment wide open and still anybody's here in the second quarter and there's Elliot she was looking at that little overhead instead goes on the deck and fast start from the Heritage Barbarians cut out though by Grace Hilton Jones and now watch that one go over the back line. And Kayla Val in shot there. Uh, she did get a good strike away on that second penalty corner, but well covered up by Isabella Holt in goal. Opting for a high press and then just managed to turn it over again after the first pass. Yeah, penalty corner coming. I think they just got tangled up more than anything. Uh, unfortunate there. They're asking the questions. 
But you're right, Oriwa off the back of the high press. It was an uncharacteristic mistake, I thought, from um, Ella Layton. Yep, and, and she was unmarked in there, so had she trapped and received that, then she would have been away, I reckon. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Had the opportunity, as we see the junior Māori side now with the opportunity through the penalty corner. Looks like Grace Hilton-Jones and Penelope Taulofo up on the bracket. They're slow to get in here, the Heritage Barbarians. Got the Val sisters in there. Yeah, Vic and Kaya as well. That's a pretty good bracket. It is a strong bracket. Talofo sprayed it. Smith can't pull it in. That's 16 yard hit again. A little untidy, probably not quite the execution they had hoped for there. You know, Kaya Elliott's line actually that she runs on that defensive PC is pretty good. Yeah, I think she's probably one of the best, uh, certainly in this tournament, but in women's hockey at running that line, she's quick. She doesn't mind wearing them on the legs if she needs to. Another quick turnover from their press. Their press has been really successful um, from this, the start of the second quarter. Yeah, and now free hit right on the edge. Brings Grace Hilton-Jones. Uh, little mix-up there for them and uh, a little bit of pressure now relieved for this heritage side here's Kayla Val yeah very that, tidy over yeah. here and that's that distance I was talking about just one layer one and a half layers there to break the press a little bit and now Elliot in the pocket picks up Vic Methvin in a ton of space excellent pass oh what a crack yeah that one trying to line up with Alia Krofsky I wonder how far um, Kayla can can throw it over here. Yeah, well, there was a big one that came out, um, you know, in that first quarter. That, that was pretty far, right? That was, was almost half half a field. Yep, it got up towards that opposite 25-yard line. Uh, obviously, something she's been working on a bit, which is uh, yeah, awesome to see. Here comes Leighton. She's away, but perhaps a little too fast for Nikki Hayes. And now we go through Vic Methvin. That's a lovely one layer again. Holly Hilton Jones had to back off. Touch there from Burton. Oh, good challenge by the keeper in there. Coming out really quickly too, because she hadn't. Yeah, there was a, another player in there past Burton. I hadn't quite seen her, uh, but luckily Isabella Holt oh, did. Yeah. Kay Laval. Great. Bravery there by Garby Smith and clean up by Murphy Phillips. Phillips. Penny Lupi Talafo brings Pia onto the ball. Oh, that's a, some lovely play here by these juniors. Beats Val, beats Elliot, beats them all over the back line. And then Garby Smith shows us her chicken dance on the way back. <laughs> I think that's what that was. You can see there the uh, Pacifica, or not Pacifica, the Heritage Barbarians ladies, uh, built up by a lot of the ex-Pacifica ladies. With the ascendancy, five shots to two on goal. So Isabella Holt there having to do a bit of work, and one each with the way of the penalty corners. You see Murphy Phillips pick one up here. And Phillips and Curry having a little laugh with each other. Yeah, and that's another cool thing to see out here. Is you have a lot of friendships playing against each other on the field. So Yeah, with and against, which is always cool. You'd be uh, exactly the same playing against some of these uh, these Māori girls that you've played uh, a bit with. Yeah, do you know what the coolest thing is? Playing playing against um, Julia. Yeah. Because yep. we're the same age. We've played together since we were like 11, mm. 10. Well, against each other. Never played with each other. Yeah. Except for some of the junior, Maldi, uh, junior New Zealand stuff. Yeah, how epic to have someone like Jules here spearheading that New Zealand Asian uh, entity. Oh, what a tackle. Yeah, Roy Mata Brown getting back there and showing off her defensive work. Love a good flat stick. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When you can pull it off, it's uh, one of the best. One on one here. Good clean up by Talofo and the Junior Māori team. 
kept in by Schnara Marshall. There's that spin, turning inside out. Kayla Val. I'd love to see her do that spin and then take off. Yeah. You know, send the ball and take off with it because she normally does it when there's there's not a lot of players behind. Mm. Yeah, that's that little spin into a 3D over the stick and oh. see you later. Yeah. Gabby Smith, where's the first challenge? Just drops it off there for Taulafo. And they all run out of it there. Some of the uh, effects of fatigue perhaps starting to show here. Uriwa, it's yeah. uh, four games in four days and it's hot out there this afternoon. You're able to see it through just not positioning early. You know, and maybe not not the chase itself, because this chase still had a bit of um, kaha in it, but yep. but not getting there earlier. Yep. And that one, flat batted away. Still there for the junior multi side. Oh, a strong challenge from the back coming through on Pia Hohepa. She just wins herself a free hit. Holly Hilton Jones will step onto it. It's just inside the 25 yard line. It's good awareness there from Pia to receive it outside the circle, but better defensive work from Tori Val. She's a pretty hard one to get past. Yep, and they'll, they'll get up in behind you real close and a flat stick flat stick in there. So if you want to beat them, I reckon it's the 3D over them and go. Yep, absolutely. There's Kayla Val. Fortunate one there for the Heritage side. Methvin throws the 3D, beats everybody. Up by Karamea at the back. Yeah, under a little bit of pressure here. Daniela Hall now on the ball. And it's no pressure for Murphy Phillips. She's out to the races. Oh, nice. Great pass. Schnara Marshall, what has she got? Go, girl. Get the gas. Drops it off to Smith. Someone else who's got some gas, yep. though, is. Kai Elliott. <laughs> she can't believe it. She thought she'd got one up over Kai Elliott. Kai Elliott gets out of the picture real quick. And Garby. A little bit scrappy here. I'm just going to settle on it now, the Heritage Barbarians. Good tackle there from... Pia, but still going. Tiana Curry, great pass. Georgia Symes, still got it there, Symes. Oh, Hits her again. And oh. the penalty corner. I don't think it was for the challenge on Holly Hilton Jones. I think that tackle was good. I think it was for the two before it. Yes, I agree, Brad, from um, Rui Mata Brown. Yep. Yep, Pep showing uh, under all that Auckland club hockey now. She is still from Rutorua. Oh, oh, Brad. <laughs> no. I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> no, I just got it a little bit wrong there, Roimata. Um, had to go at it because it was 3D and it was bouncing, but yeah, a little bit of a stick check before. The defensive work of Holly Hilton Jones is real good. Got in there on the shot, but uh, the arm was already up. Yeah, it's, uh, it's sometimes hard eh, on the chase back not to dangle your stick yep. in there unless you know you're going to get the ball. Val. With the shot. Oh, it wasn't convincing the save, but it's uh, over the back line nonetheless. Oh, that, that looked a bit. It looked soft as if it yeah. had hit not a, a goalkeeping boot, but um, we'll get a replay, I'm sure, just after this position gets done. That's better defence from Luma to Brown. There yep. she goes. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to see uh, that penalty corner replay at one of the next stoppages. Hey, and check this out. We've still got some height now still from this uh, junior Māori side with Ahu Mairangi hovering around the top of the circle. That's better height from them. Yep. Oh, great pick. Kai Elliott. And the pass is going to fall there for Riley Grills. She's got speed. Grills going. Drives through. And Holt watches it over the back line. Just going to have a quick look at this penalty corner, hopefully. Let's see where it did get to. Yeah, hard to tell there. Holt went the right way and she had the right, the big right boot out at it. But uh, yeah, long corner coming and...
Uh, from here, we've now got the junior multi side back on the ball through Sinead Phillips, Holly Hilton Jones linking up. Great passing lanes there from Vic Methvin. Methvin can't believe it. <laughs> Finally gets the whistle, but it's gone the other way. Holly and uh, Vic, teammates at Weston. Alongside, of course, Kai Elliott and uh, Gracie Hilton Jones. So the four Western ladies out there in these two teams. I she don't think there's time to argue. No. Not when there's plenty of Māori ladies up the field. Oh, you would have loved to see Ahu just uh, look at a shot there. Oh, yes, I would have. You've got some space, girl. Just crack it. Yep, had the entry. Not often do you catch Tori Val out of position, so you got to go while it's there. And still here for the multi team, Talafo. Thought she found a foot. Yeah, Nothing we coming. Are, we are seeing the fatigue of both sides actually creeping. You know, a good, good, good team fitness would show that you just turn around and do what the umpire says and you move. But you've just seen a bit of passage of play where both teams are turning around, not happy with the umpire's calls, but then also walking back. Yeah, yeah. It only compounds the pain in behind, really. For the rest of your teammates, that one unfortunate finds the foot there of Vic Methvin. She has a little smile about it and gets back into spot. Sinead Phillips coming from the field. And Grace Hilton Jones now yeah, on the ball. We haven't seen her much this game yet. I'm sure she has more to offer, but in the previous game, she's had a lot of go forward from yeah. this right hand side of the field. Yeah, yeah, she has. And uh, I wonder if it's, uh, I guess, a. Uh, tactical change just to keep their back four intact or, or if there's uh, you know something they'll change in that third quarter where they allow their wing halves to promote and push um, we'll, we'll wait and see but she's the sort of athlete that can go all day and uh, she's got a huge gas tank Grace Hilton Jones and now Hall can't go down Main Street against Tori Vale. yeah good positioning on the hotline there See some of the uh, support crew on the opposite side of the field. Awesome to see them out here cheering on these two teams. Here's Val looking over. That's that spot again. Beautiful yeah. spot. And well read and, and led back into it. There we go. Really well done by McConnell. Oh, oh. Now, under a bit of pressure, Chanel Udziruera works out through Murphy Phillips. Phillips has been good all weekend. Really good in this game and just her ability to calmly get out of pressure. That one, not so calm, but it's going to work here for Gabby Smith. And Tori Val thought she got away with one there. I've just seen a little bit, and again, we talk about fatigue, I don't want to harp on about it, but a few times there where they've won a free hit, they've run up to it, taken it quickly, and just pushed it, pushed it straight to the opposite team. Um, that's the sort of stuff that just going to compound fatigue, and it's a coach killer. Uh, makes things really tough on the legs when you're giving free hits straight back like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, an easy way to overcome that is it's just you've got to compose and calm yourself on the ball in those those balls that you think are really on when they're kind of half on, you just, just don't give them. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Sometimes in these finals, you just got to tighten things up a little bit. Um, you know, I know it means not playing as expansive, but it just keeps your position and keeps your legs a little bit better. Yeah, and I think because of the go-forward strength that this junior Māori team has, that's, that's something that they look for quite yeah. often, regardless of whether they're tired or not. Yeah, yeah, and... Uh, Perhaps they just need a little bit of experience to calm things down a little oh, bit. Oh, I like it. It's a great what overhead. Is, oh, He's no. called it for danger with uh, Kaylee Tuirovi over getting in nice and close. That's one benefit of being that tall on the yeah. field is that you only have to be four metres away and you're, it's dangerous. Yep, absolutely. Now, Kai Elliott, she's going to take on Wilmata Brown and def in fact decides to go elsewhere through the Val sisters. Vic Methvin on the resi. Oh, she's got a hold of it. Tell you what, if she's had a bit more of an angle, I'd love to see her have a crack at one, Vic Methvin. 
Do you know what? I would have loved to have seen someone get a touch on that yeah. on the post. That's a difficult touch to get. Yep. That's it. You put your arms on it like a motorbike, hold the stick there and just hope it hits it. Close your eyes. Yep. Hope it doesn't hit your face. Yeah, that's a fair rocket on the uh, on the reverse there from Vic Methvin. Yeah, look at this really high press by the um, Heritage side, but the gaps in behind is pretty expensive. Yeah, they're playing a bit of, uh, it's almost like a 3-2 dish press there where they're creeping both sides up, yeah. trying to plug in with the inside midfielders and just hoping like heck it doesn't get through. <laughs> That's an interesting thought that... Yeah, Ella Leighton thought she had that one. I'm not entirely sure. Why? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I guess they say opportunity fortunes the brave, and uh, maybe she was feeling brave. Oh, mate, if, if you can get away with it. Yeah. I'm all for that. Long here. Brave. That's yeah, brave. That's exactly she didn't move. it. Wardington linking up with Rahuruhi. Puts Speed, it on the foot. Let's go. And they've run out of time here at this junior Māori side. Gabby Smith was alone up in the circle, but the clock beat them all to it. And two quarters in, halfway through the match. We're locked up still at nil all here. Oriwa, it's our women's gold medal match. Both teams really starting to show some signs of fatigue. Um, uncharacteristic errors, unforced turnovers. Um, both teams, I'm sure, were wanting to be tightening those things up coming into this third quarter. Oh, absolutely. You'd like to see the that push, that mental push through the fatigue would be great. And especially for some of these ball-carrying uh, junior players, that they've got some amazing ball-carrying skills. And if they could push through that mental challenge of my legs aren't moving, um, I can't get to that gap, you just get there. And th I think they will find it. They will tear the field apart yeah uh, that's it and it's um you know what i think would really like to see from those players is not only the ball carrier doing that leg work but just one extra or two extra players on their team do that extra lead work yep. make it easy for the ball carrier and then that stuff does start to happen um so you know real challenges for both these teams to overcome that fatigue we're going to go to a short ad break and we'll be back with some of the first half highlights after this Welcome back here to Half Time. I'm joined in commentary by Oriwa Hepi. Oriwa, uh, it's been an awesome four days or three and a half days of Heritage Hockey Tournament so far. Um, just before we get back to what's happened in this game, what have been some of your highlights of the weekend, whether it's in your NZI camp or some of the stuff you've seen on the turf? What are some of those uh, awesome memories from this weekend? It's always going to be the same thing, I think, for this competition is the inclusivity of the different cultures. And, uh, man, difficult for me to admit, but we lost this morning. But we lost to an amazing group of, of Asian players that you'd never see come together otherwise, you know, and represent their culture. Uh, amazing for me to experience more of the Indian heritage that I have and learning more about the language and the culture and like how the country itself is all split up. So that, that those cultural experiences for, for me is, 
is absolutely amazing, and I hope that a lot of these other girls enjoy the same kind of thing. Yeah, that's uh, and you, you mentioned there the uh, New Zealand Asian ladies uh, new to the tournament, both the men's and ladies' sides uh, this year, new to the Heritage Hockey Tournament, spearheaded by some really key people, the likes of Julia King and, and Jess Ellis on the ladies' side, and then um, we think about Lloyd McLaughlin and, and Dylan Muggleston and guys in the men's team. Um, what an epic first tournament for those two teams. The women getting their first win, begrudgingly, I know, against your NZI ladies this morning. Um, and then the men winning two penalty shootouts, one against the junior Maldi side and one against the finalist NZ Fiji. How, um, you know, how important is, the, is it for them to have had a successful first campaign, both on and off the field, in terms of growing that product for next year? Yeah, I, I mean, like, no one wants to go to somewhere where they don't feel like there's a place for them, right? Mm. And so, so when you come to a tournament and you manage to just get away with some wins or some success, it makes you a little bit more hungry to want to build build the product, you know, as you were saying. Um, so it's really exciting. And I think actually going on to earlier, later on in this month, quite a few of these girls out on the field today are going to be playing in a tri-series against Australia country. So with the senior Maldives and the senior Pacifica teams, eh? Yep, yep, that's right. That's right. We'll see a few of these uh, these ladies taking part um, in both those games, the upcoming Australian country series down in Rotorua um, later in April. Uh, we can't wait to see See that back on the turf, um, but back out here at the moment, it's our women's gold medal match between the New Zealand Junior Māori team in the black, taking on the Heritage Barbarians in the red. And Oriwa, nothing to separate these two teams at the moment. Um, what, are your, what are your thoughts? What are your predictions? I don't expect you to say who's going to win, but... Is it going to open up and we're going to see a whole bunch of goals here or are we thinking we're looking at a 1-0, 1-all type of fixture? Look, uh, I think it's really dependent at the moment on who puts the most effort out on the field today. And by effort, I mean like who's going to make that extra touch on that ball to make sure that you win front, front position. Who's going to do that extra two steps to make sure you give your player a clear pass. Y you know, it, there's heaps of little things on the field that you can do to make the game easier for your teammates. And are you going to do them? And whoever does that for them, for, for the whole team as a whole, I think that's the team that's going to come out on top. Yeah, and it's really interesting too with how this plays out is I also think it, it does depend on when the first goal is scored. Oh, I yes. think if it's pretty soon, then we could just see two teams throwing it at each other for 30 minutes. If it takes till midway through that fourth quarter, then it really could just be a wind-down job, and we see it finish up at 1-0. So, yeah, I'm really uh, excited to see how this first five minutes here unfolds, both in how they attack, like you've been talking about, but also when that first goal happens. And if it can happen early here, we're all on. Yeah, yeah, and also, yeah, the timing of when the goal gets scored, I think, gives teams uh, an extra push in what they have to offer, or it could it could deflate them a little bit. Uh, I mean, it, scoring just before a, a quarter time break mm. is always good, so you come off the break with with more of a of an oomph. Yep. A well played team goal. Oh, look at this break through the middle, yep. Kai and Holly. <laughs> this is the matchup. This is the matchup of the tournament. Holly Hilton Jones and Kaya Elliott. Uh, two good friends, two club mates, and two that will play for Taitukuro together at the uh, Māori tournament this year. As we see penalty corner, look at the support there from the Heritage ladies. They look uh, pretty tired in there. What do you, you would know? You had the uh, early doors game this morning. Yeah, um, tried to go through with not much sleep. <laughs> yeah. I bet, as you see, Riley Grills here. Just turned it on to the back foot there of Grace Hilton-Jones. And we talk about those periods right before and after a, a quarter-time break or half-time break. So a couple of threats that they have up on the circuit today. You've got Kaya Elliott, who has a, a really nice deceptive sweep. Yep. Slides really fast off her stick. And then obviously just, just the power from the hit at the top from Bao. Goes this time to Elliott. Going to lay it off to Riley Grills and it just rolls onto the back of their stick. That's not what they were looking for. I think you'll find they were trying to go the slider to Vic Methvin, who just wound herself a it little bit further like, around. It looked like she'd set up for a day yep. in her body position. Yeah, and I think the trap there just didn't let her get that slider away. 
Um, so look at that potentially if they get another penalty corner here is where Vic Methvin positions herself. She's a pretty fearless uh, runner. She'll get in and get that deflection. Oh, I nice like it. I like yep. that. Yeah, she's a crafty player, Vic. Quite often you'll see a lot of defenders defend to the top of the circle. So if you can just pop it past them through that one touch, that's... That's gold, man, if you've yep. got some strikers hovering in there. Yeah, it's something that um, I've noticed you're quite a big fan of as well, those little one-touches around the, the circle edge, whether you're the touch one or the deliverer. You like throwing a little angled ball at that edge there. So, yeah, we've seen a bit of it from yourself, and cool to see it out there again from yeah. these ladies. I mean, it was really difficult to work a ball into the circle from yep. there. Stationary play, yes. defense is all set up. Yep. As we see, turnover here from set up through Hannah Roselia. One back by the multi team, and there's oh, oh an unfortunate call yeah, against I've, her. I think they've called back of the stick. I actually thought it was pretty good. Yeah, that, that tackle, though, tidy. is good. Yeah, and a nice thrown ball to the T spot. I don't think we see enough of that. Grills beats one, and probably can't believe it. I think that's probably deserving more of a penalty corner than the first one yes. she won. Yep. <laughs> Very clear obstruction with two players just running straight in front of her. On comes the skipper here, Penelope Talafo for the junior team. Straight into some defence. And that one's uh, been overcooked there. Trying to link up with Ella Layton. Goes past everybody. Yeah, talk about difficult um, things to do. Getting out of these kind of zones on the field is also difficult to do. Uh, this is where those overheads come into really handy. Yeah, this time Hilton Jones and uh, Amy McConnell just opting to play small games out. Luma to Brown does well, so rip it onto the foot. How do your, I mean, it's probably pretty obvious, but your indoor skills help for periods like that when you're trying to play small games out of areas, create triangles or shapes like you do in, in indoor is that something that you implement in your game when you're in those areas? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think ball protection over everything is, is a great skill that you end up using from indoor. Just not playing the ball too far away from you where other people have even a little chance. And then you have to keep your head up and keep an eye on where the player are planting their feet and their stick, and then that's when you choose to, to go. Yeah, and I, I think it was you and I talking about it the other day, just the um, dimension of like a, a V-drag rather than straight left to right in under your own feet and getting that defender to overreach, and then you can target that target foot there. Those little skills, little subtleties that I'm sure these players will begin to develop, but those indoor skills really help fast track that. Uh, yep. Yep, absolutely. Playing that that kind of control and have to have so much confidence in your ability to keep the ball flat on the floor and controlled. Yep. It, it's a bit, whoa, hold on, here we go. Yeah, this is an opportunity here for Roimata Brown. She's run herself into a bit of trouble there unnecessarily, I think. Brown under a bit of pressure on the inside from Tori Val, but would like to see her try and chop back under or, or yeah. roll out and create a better option than just running down into the goalkeeper. Well, the thing with Tori is you have to give that a pretty big drag to get away, yeah. from, get away from her stick length. Yeah, that's it. So sometimes it's better to stay in close, stay in yeah. by her feet. and Work it onto her feet. Oh, no. That's miscommunication. Okay, but we're seeing a bit of excitement now. So we're entering the circle multiple times, just waiting for them to let one rip, really. Yeah, and look at this full press again by the junior multi side. That's a nice relieving overhead, though, for Grills. Grills with the chip and chase. Foot race. Oh, no, that's not what you want to do. Nah, she didn't need to do that. She already had the pressure on, Riley Grills. And now if she's not careful, she could uh, find herself with a card. I don't think she collect any, collected any stick there. It didn't sound like it no, anyway. No, no, just the wrong option, trying to go across the body. A little awkward there. A little uh, keep possession through Daniela Hall. Off goes Ella Layton. Here is uh, Val on the ball. Yeah, nice. Yeah, well cut out by Holly Hilton Jones. Not too much pressure on it. Although Riley Grill's getting into it there. Hall just searching. And it works out for them there. It's probably not the pass she was trying to give. Gabby Smith. She wants speed. Bullet a gate, Garvey Smith. Yep, she just she wants, wants to, to go. go forward. She yeah. does, doesn't she? Almost every time she gets the ball. 
Not yeah. slowing down for anyone. Here she is, Smith, and it goes. It's off the stick there of the defender. See Connor Walsh umpiring down the far end there. And the bright pinks here along with Nikki Hayes, of course, our umpires for the day. That's a good choice of colour for the goal, uh, for the umpires, actually. You cannot get them confused with anyone else with that bright pink. Yeah, that's it. They stand out well. And this one going in. Easy cut out there from Kai Elliott. She had tons of time. Now she's going to take on her Western teammate. Got to jump through the camera there, Kai Elliott. It's not like her to. Uh, I thought she was going to collect that. Oh, I thought so too. Yeah. I thought. Ooh. And that was going to be her gone. <laughs> yeah. It's not like uh, Kai to be hanging around where the cameras are, <laughs> posing as always. I'm sure. And just gets big on her there, unfortunately. And uh, the multi side. We'll take a little bit of a breath here while Hilton Jones brings it back up to the 16-yard marker. It's also a good tactic, isn't it? Just to give your team a, a few extra seconds for a breath. Yeah, get some subs on and off, uh, yep. you know, roll through your rotations. Oh, look at that pass. Set up into areas, and now Garvey Smith needs no invitation. Oh, look at this ball's open. Oh. Tori Val does what she does best. Yep, I would have liked to have seen that ball go early to that free player on the right side. Danger, I think, is going to be the call there. Gabby Smith, not quite sure why, but full press again here. Look at where Shinara Marshall is. Very obvious where they want the ball. They want and to they try go. and target. Good skill there from Rebecca Massey. And finds the pass to Brooklyn Burton. There's Burton, that. there's a pass there. It's given. Finally gets there to Hannah Roselia. Oh, PC. Yep, does well not uh, to rush through that shot. Yeah, that, that was actually quite impressive. You, you, you want to take the shot, don't you? But once you see that pressure coming in, if you don't, pull out from it then it's just going to get touched yep absolutely we've seen so many of them be defended pretty easily there Roy Mata Brown's in good spot and she just lost her feet there unfortunate for Brown but now an opportunity for this heritage side to strike first in the women's gold medal match I feel like this heritage side has had quite a few PCs yep I'll be looking to capitalise on at least one of them. It's a good drag. It's a great look at it from that camera angle too. Straight yep. down the uh, the line there. Well saved by Izzy Holt. Yeah, what, just watched it onto her pads, didn't she? And they're bouncy too, so those ones are a little bit harder to get. Yeah, we see it from this angle. It's not quite as wide, uh, wide as Kayla would usually have those. It's a quick win there by Georgia Symes. Beats one. In she goes. Can't beat number two. And Trinell Woods, it a there on the ball. Oh. It's uh, not what you wish for on your birthday. <laughs> that might be, though. A ball straight to a center striker and... Penelope Taulofo. So we've seen her push up into the strike line now. I think yeah. they're just wanting a little bit of, uh, what would you call her style? Like a... Yeah, a little bit of toughness, I think. Yeah. A, a little bit of go, a little bit of uh, aggression. Uh, she scored a real cracking reverse stick goal earlier in the weekend. Did you see that one go across the goal there of the junior multi side? Yeah, and actually Holly getting doing well to get her feet out of the way. She saw the spin coming in. Really, you don't know where that spin's going to end up. So to get your feet out of the way really quickly is quite good. Yeah, I think you did a really tidy one of those in your game this morning at the top of the circle just outside. Turned and spun it through, um, trying to link up with uh, Shinsia there. Uh, yeah. That sort of skill there, so hard to defend um, You know, if you can't get your feet out of the way quick enough. Across the field they go. Bit of space out here for Hall. 
Oh, nice pass. Well defended by Vic Methvin. She's the sort of player that if you have a loose receive or a half trap, she's going to clean it up. She's uh, really solid there. Penelope um, really had to take that receive in one go and beat her with it because uh, otherwise she cleans up. Yeah. And we've now. got a bit of pressure coming forward. Oh, no. The touch is going to fall there for the Heritage Barbarians. Second phase now through Brooklyn Burton. Burton. Circle entry finds the foot of yeah. her own. Yeah, got her own foot there. Yeah. Amy McConnell did well in defence. Yeah, cool. I just like the, moving the ball a bit quicker around their press is probably a good idea. Um, the, their press is quite wide and stationary, so moving the press and then looking to go to where the gaps have just opened up, like the inside lines, yep. they're quite open. Yeah, that, that's it. It is a wide press, and they've got to shift them quickly, as we saw a, a lovely bit of skill there from Georgia Symes, just turning a couple of multi defenders inside out. We'll see it on this replay here. Beats one. Chucks it straight under the foot there of Woods Eduida. High fives all around. Yeah, I wonder if we can see the stats of the PCs come up again of um, just how many PCs they've had now. Here we go. Here we go. Five to one. It's felt all of that so far. Um, nothing from either of them for either team, but dominant in terms of winning penalty corners. This Heritage Barbarian side. And there's the shots on goal. Heavily favouring this Heritage team. And I think it's probably pretty accurate. Holly Landon hasn't had to do a lot this quarter. They go short. She's got a slider. Vic got it. And Grace Hilton Jones on the dive. You love that. Oh, I love that. The commitment, because that's what you need out there, especially if you want to win this final. Yep, that's it. And uh, I um, actually spoke to Holly Hilton Jones, not Grace, but Holly yesterday. And um, she said after my comment at last Molly tournament, they're sick of being the bridesmaids. They're sick of coming second. You know, there's a few I mentioned of those Taitukuro girls that have picked up their fair share of silver medals over the last few years. They're sick of it. Today's the day. Um, I don't want to jinx anything, but um, you said it, Holly, and uh, now it's the time to step up and, and make sure of it. Make sure it happens. Well, we've got one of the sisters doing what she can. Yep. Nice tackle coming yeah. up. That one, though, 3D got through, and McConnell cleaned up. Karamea again here, releases some pressure. And here is Karamea, leaders there on the ball. Hang out through Grace Hilton-Jones. She's been good this weekend, um, Grace. A uh, real strong player. Does a lot of work. Can play up and down the field. Oh, wow. That's... Unfortunate there for Murphy Phillips. Here comes Kai Elliott. Elliott has it on her stick. Turns inside. Still there for Elliott. Oh, and penalty corner. That was almost simultaneous. Only fractions of a second before that hooter went. That's real tough one to swallow for the junior multi team. Man, if we go back, Brad, what we were saying about before the goals... If this was to be converted, this is a great time to have a goal. Yeah, this is the perfect moment if you're the Heritage side. I mean, any time in a final is will feel like the perfect moment, but what heartbreak to win the penalty corner as the hoot is uh, ringing and then to potentially put one in and yep. go into the break up. And so additionally, because it is a PC, your entire team is allowed to be up because it doesn't matter if it goes out, so... If the ball goes out of the circle a second time or out of the five metre mark for the first time, the PC is over. Here we go, Kayla Vouch has to freestyle. Methvin still there for Brooklyn Burton. What a save from Izzy Holt. Had to be done. They Im had important save. Yep, huge in the context of the game. If that one had got through, it would have been heartbreak for the junior multi side. So they'll. And you can see it. Look at them. They've got a bit of a jog going off. They've got some confidence from turning that one away. Yep, yep. So that's really vital to give your team a little bit of energy coming into the start of the last quarter because someone's going to have to pull something out of the bag, Brad. Yeah, and, and you can probably also see a little bit of the frustration on the Heritage 
Barbarians team. They've had six penalty corners now, unable to get anything through. They probably think, well, we deserve one. It doesn't matter what you deserve if you don't go out and make sure of it. So, you know, they'll probably be a little frustrated as we see Presh there uh, in the middle of their team talk getting through his bit of instruction. Yeah, and you see um, Courtney Phillips out there too, demanding the attention of her team. Um, another exceptional coach, a mold, young Māori coach that we have. She came away to the fives with us and it was amazing to have her there. Um, and now she's giving back to the juniors as she has in the previous years. Yeah, that's it. And, uh, you know, she's been a long time servant, not only for Māori hockey, but for Taitukaro Māori hockey. And there's a number of those girls that she's coached there in this side this weekend. Um, so some of those connections, they start to come through um, as these games go on. Yeah, and talking about young coaches, it was a privilege to have such a young coach for our team, Priya Kang. Mm. To have her confidence and her knowledge just seep through the team was actually really cool. Um, you watched her go from strength to strength in being able to deliver what she wanted, ask what she wanted of the team. And having the young female coaches mm. specifically coming through helping these teams out is good. Yeah, and I think it's a, it's a really cool opportunity, this tournament, for those sorts of coaches to obviously not have to, to commit to a, a 20 uh, weekend season but still at a level that's probably above the club level that they can really come and test their medal at over a four five day period um, and really grow their skills without that full season type of commitment so a uh, really cool opportunity and awesome to see some of those uh, young coaches jumping at it and here goes the fast start for the junior multi side Gabby Smith couldn't find the foot there of Tiana Curry and Tori Vale cleans up on the way out. And it's a quick turnover. So nil all here, Oriwa. What do you think we might uh, be in for in these final 17 minutes? Oh, man, I, if, if the team teams come out like really just firing, as you could just see Garby there, if she leads her team in that kind of that kind of excitement, I think we all, we all have some cool shots on goal and a little bit of a spectacle. But then on the other side, if, if, if we just see... Oh, here we go. That's a lovely cross. Yeah, and great effort. Grace Hilton-Jones getting in nice and low. Good, strong position. She had to because Riley Grills was just sitting there waiting for yep, it. Yeah, she won front position really well there. But again, just to actually deliver that across the face of the goal. Yep. Flat. Yep. She's... Uh, Got a massive, massive skill set, Kaya Elliott. And I know, uh, I think she picked up tournament MVP at this tournament last year. Oh, if I believe I remember, she did. Uh, yeah. Correctly, um, in her Pacifica women's side. Uh, through no surprise to most that were watching, she was uh, epic last year. And this oh. one, whew, through again. Man, yeah. they're firing some, uh, some long range missiles at the moment, this Heritage Barbarian side. Yeah, and I think that's a massive threat of theirs is they've got quite a few players who have the ability to find those gaps. Yep. And if these strikers can just get any touch towards the goal. That's it. When when you've got the likes of the Val sisters, Vic Methvin, um, Kai Elliott, who can deliver a real solid ball, Tiana Curry, the same. All it takes is a little touch, and the yep. goalkeeper's not going to see it. It's not, uh, you know, it's not going to be saved. It's going to be in the net real quick, so... Just and little even opportunities. The, the consistency of having it happen yep. over and over again, that will build, also build confidence for the strikers to be able to get more. Yep, that's it. And uh, I'm sure a little foot race there. The ball, as it so often does, beating everybody yep. out over the baseline. I think the only person that the ball doesn't beat, and you might not be familiar, um, audio is a young man, Caleb Williamson, who's playing for the junior multi side. I've seen him outrun the ball a couple of times. Uh, it's pretty <laughs> epic the weekend he's had. Uh, again, go and check some of the highlights from our earlier men's bronze medal match to see that in action. But out here at the moment, we're still locked up. It's 14 minutes left to play in this final quarter. Which team is going to get there first? Which team is going to get the gold medal? Which team can break the nil all dark eggs? Pia just lost her stick. Yeah. In the tackle, picked it back up and was in the next tackle. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, really good effort shown there by Pia. And a uh, little breakdown is going to fall the way of that Heritage 
side up towards halfway. Yeah, cool little midfield battles going on here with a bit of skill. So then you're really relying on work rates to be able to, to stay in the challenge. Yeah, that's it. And uh, one of the highlights again that we see there is the overhead ball from this Heritage Barbarian side. I haven't seen a women's side use it so successfully like the way through, through multiple different players like this Heritage team. Yes, uh, that's so good to see because, and that's the other thing, is su successfully used. Yep. Dropping into the spaces that you want them to do and then for it to actually go to your players. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And speaking of a good pass, that one there unlocked a ton of space for Daniela Hall. She gets it past Tori and onto oh, the foot of Kayla. What a drive. I, I do like it, the bob that bobbly pass into the circle. I don't like bobbly passes out of the circle, <laughs> yeah. but, but into the circle, it's just really hard to collect as a defender when you're running at full pace. Yeah, that's it. And she was backtracking, trying to get back towards the line of the goal and just got caught on the foot there. Did Kayla Val and... Uh, this might be the first goal opportunity in a while that these junior Maldives have seen. And we do know they do have a very good PC bracket. Yeah, we haven't seen uh, attacking corner at this end of the field, so it's been uh, since first half. They go short through Talofo. She goes straight at it and gets up on her. Good save there by Holly Landon, and they come out quickly here. The Barbarians, Brooklyn oh, lovely. Burton. Burton has grills. Grills. Oh, imagine the touch on that. Yeah, that one would have been one for the highlight reels. Absolutely. Riley Grills, little reverse stick. This touch Look at pass. this, that touch passes. That's what made that attack. And this one, oh, millimetres in it. Very difficult. You're running full pace. It comes to your feet instead of in front of you. It's very yep. hard to... Hard to control. But it's one of those ones we talk about where the goalie wouldn't have even seen it. No, you don't have no. a chance um, to save that. It would have been a, a goal, absolutely, if she got any touch on it. And we come again. Yeah, Ella Leighton here. She's going to take on Roymata Brown. Leighton. Great spot tackle on the reverse by Roymata Brown. Impressive defensive work there. Yeah, we're going to see them set up with most of their plays in this defensive D. You don't want to be conceding at this point in time. Yeah, just gone 11 minutes left to play in the women's gold medal match. Fourth quarter, locked up nil all. What do you, it might be uh, a coin toss whether we're going to a shootout here or not. We've already seen one today. Could we be on track for another one? Could the Heritage that would Barbarians? Be an exciting I was, was going to say, could the the Heritage Barbarians ladies do it twice in two days, scrape themselves through to this final, and then perhaps upset the previously unbeaten Maldi side? Oh, it gives me traum traumatic experiences. <laughs> I'll have PTSD if we keep talking about that. <laughs> Yabi Smith just tries to get out of town. And uh, big opportunity for whoever can be the first to strike here inside the last 10 minutes now. We talked about when was this goal going to happen and if it happens she late. Just sandwiched in there. Yeah. With a nice turnover by those two. And she's done well. Riley Grills just getting in nice and low. I, puts I, it on the foot. I like the intent of this Barbarian side. They've had a little bit of taste of the circle and now they're working hard no matter what. Yeah, you see that flat stick tackle there from Grills. Really good. It was uh, Georgia Symes who made the first little entry and now... Can you pick it, Brad? Where's the ball going? I'm going back to uh, Kayla and I'm letting her have another hit at it. That's my guess. So they go short. Now they go back to Kayla. There's some open space. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that, oh my goodness. Yeah, that was about to be beautiful. Riley Grills again. And we have the opportunity to counterattack. Grills couldn't believe it had got to her. She wasn't expecting it, I don't she, think. She wasn't. She uh, wasn't. And uh, she probably thought Tori Val, uh, Kayla Val had enough time just to, to crack one straight at goal. 
She ended and up opening the wrists a little bit and uh, it was delivered on a plate there. Also, I mean, would you be standing flat sticked? No, I think probably just a little bit too deep <laughs> in the circle, facing straight back in that direction. Mm. You'd want to see a little more angle as we see it here on the replay. I was more good getting it when she's hitting the ball. Yeah, like, I wouldn't. Who, uh, who's going <laughs> to stand there and yeah. wait for her to hit it at your face? But Well, not that she does it that high, but. No, really great spot. Just uh, probably got on her a little bit quick. Unfortunate there for the Barbarian side, but. We've got some width. Yeah, there's good spaces here for this Māori side. Garby Smith goes Delivers down. it in. Oh, and another exciting oh. touch at the other end of the field. Now they've just missed the goal, but how good was that entry? Yeah, that is. And it was built on, you talked about the width. Look at the players going in the opposite direction. Two there, so down the line. Marshall, Matt, Sinead Phillips. Don't oh. you love the against the grain carry and yep. then against the grain pass? And, and really disciplined from those two multi players that were already going that direction. Not to turn around and just try and get in that passing lane yep. again. Leave it Clear open out. for whoever is coming yep. in behind you. Yeah. That's it. And uh, for both sides now, breathe a, a little bit of relief out of these last couple of minutes. Teams are starting to push now. And uh, sooner or later... I think we're seeing a little bit more excitement, eh? Like they know that it's getting down to the last seven minutes. Yep. And really you just need to put it all out there. And we see the shots on goal there, 11 to 4 in favour of the Heritage Barbarian side. Goalkeepers oh, equal to everything that. so far. And down come this Heritage side. Riley Grills beats one, loses her stick in the process. Holly Hilton Jones still going. Yeah, she's playing tidy today. She's just playing safe, really. So, and that's that's quite important to have a composed, safe player in the middle of the field. Yeah. Yeah, she's one that's really matured over the last few years. Um, Holly Hilton Jones really leads this team around from the back. Now, Brad, there's a juniors North v South coming up at some point, isn't there? Are yep. Some of these girls playing in that, do you know? Yeah, I I don't know exactly who, and I, I would hate to miss some people out. I know Holly uh, is definitely playing in it. The uh, North vs. South New Zealand under-21 games. Um, again, I don't uh, know for sure. I don't have any team lists or anything in front of her. But speaking to Holly yesterday, she definitely is playing. Okay. And I'm sure she won't be alone. There'll be some more of these uh, these players here. I'd, I'd be pretty certain that Kaya Elliott's playing in it. Yep. Um, I know Doimata Brown's been a part of the camps. Yep. I'm unsure if she's playing in it. Yeah, but it wouldn't surprise me if there's a, a fair few of these players out here this weekend that are taking part in that and uh, of course we wish them the absolute best yeah absolutely i hope they smash it it's a good little warm-up i guess if you want to call it that this tournament good to get back into stride start of the season type of stuff yep. for some of these ladies hit the ground running perhaps a little bit ahead of some of their counterparts we've got ubers of space up here on the left hand side for the junior multi team yeah daniela hall Probably just a little bit guilty of receiving that ball into the defender. Um, yep. She had a bit more space if she just received it going on forward. the sideline. Yep, yeah. and going up the line. Oh, love that drag. Yep. <coughs> and now the pass for to Ravi Ravi. Going to run out of space. No, it keeps it in. Pressure now for Hilton Jones. It's a good tackle there by Hannah Roselia. And um, another from Murphy Phillips. Speaking to Tui Ravi Ravi the other day, yesterday actually, um, I know she's looking to try and get involved with more of her Fijian heritage and their national side, so it would be exciting to see what she can come up with over the next few years in terms of their fives in the fives campaign. Yeah, well, that's right. We spoke to, um, or Harley did spoke to Divyanka uh, a little bit earlier this yes. morning. And just uh, some opportunities coming up oh there. Oh, my goodness. What's going to happen? Yeah, Divyanka. Yeah, just uh, creating some of these opportunities and maybe one for um, Kaylee to take part in that Fiji inside. Oh, in that would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Young girl from Tauranga. Yep. And I think her mum, uh, Ruth, is managing the uh, the side this weekend, this uh, Heritage Barbarian side. Yeah, I've seen her around. So, really cool here as we're inside the final four minutes now. There was a little bit of push and shove earlier. Garby Smith trying to get some people carded. Yeah. I think she was trying to set up Tiana Curry, actually, to get the card. 
And now, bit of space for Grills. One to beat. Beats it with ease. And the pass. Oh. Can't get through Hilton Jones. Hilton Jones can't believe it. Elliot off. Elliot going. Chops one. Oh. Nice ball protection. And Holly Hilton Jones does really well there. Here we see an unforced error there and an opportunity now for the Heritage Barbarians through Riley Grills. Grills. Well tidied. Yeah. Oh, she just gives it straight back though. Still there. Oh! And it's in. It's Riley Grills. She does it again. And I'm telling you, it was bound to happen. They had so many circle entries, so many shots on goal. And it's finally paid off for them. Man, what do you think these junior girls are going to come back with? Uh, the, well, they've got two and a half minutes to do it. And it's going to have to happen quickly. Riley Grills. Let's have a look at this. It's pretty messy. It's a typical finals goal. That one really well tackled by Trinell. That one saved by Holt. And Bang, then, straight in. Yep. yep. In it goes. And now Holly Hilton jones She's going Thanos. She's got <laughs> the five stones. Here goes Garby Smith. Inside chop. Still there for Smith. Beats She's her got again. Speed. This is exciting. Goes. Penalty corner coming for the Maldi team, and it was Grace Hilton Jones way up the field. Holly Landon just looking a bit puzzled at the umpire there. Yeah, we'll have a look at this one on the replay. Garby Smith, well, she went three times around the roundabout. This one, the fourth time. She got faster each time she went. And there it is, yeah. So Grace got the shot away, and it was the stick from Kay Val that just got tangled up and really obstructed uh, Grace a second opportunity at it. So the right call in the end yep. uh, could be huge here. It's clean. It's run down. Second shot. Great defense there by Tori Val. The running from Kai Elliott first. Oh, they'll have a second chance, though. They didn't manage to trap that on the, oh, on the exit. Giving it straight back. That's some of the rush stuff that we've seen, unfortunately, from this junior multi side today. Yeah. And this Heritage Barbarian side, with uh, some of their wisdom at the back, they're going to take this as slow as they can. Yeah, a minute to go. A bit of pressure now on it. I don't think it's going to make its way out. Good work there from Chanel Woods, Edoweta. Gives her a little spray on the way through too. Love that. Must be from the north. There's nobody up that channel for the Maldi team. Cut out by Tui Ravi Ravi. I've just got to hold on for 30 more seconds here. I hate to say it, Brad, but we might have another Bridesmaids episode. Uh, look, uh, I tell you what, the unbeaten streak might just be coming to an end here for the Junior Maldi side. The Heritage Barbarians, they barely scrape into this final. And now they could cause the upset of the weekend. Ten the seconds final to go. ten seconds. This is going to be it. They're going to run out of time here. Vic Methvin's going to roll it off the line. She's going to go to the corner. And she's just going to hold it. That is and the that's end it. of the game. That's time up. It's taken almost 65 minutes to separate these two teams. And it's one lone goal to Riley Grills that wins this year's Heritage Hockey Tournament. The New Zealand Heritage Barbarians, Orua. It was an arm wrestle the whole game. But if we looked at the stats and we looked at the position and where the game was being played, it's probably deserved by the Heritage Barbarians. Yeah, it, it is definitely deserved by the Heritage Barbarians. The, um, the amount of shots they had going towards goal. Uh, you can't have that many without getting one yep. actually in the goal, you know. Um, it's extremely disappointed for um, these young Māori girls being, you know, part of the senior Māori setup. up I, I really feel for them, and I, they've done really well. They're mostly juniors, a couple of seniors, but they've played against some really experienced players out there today throughout the entire weekend, and they did hold 
hold themselves really well. Uh, they just couldn't pull it through to this last last little bit. And Brad, uh, experience has a lot to do with it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's the old adage, and I know it doesn't play perfectly here, but a lot of people say you've got to lose a final to win a final. People that have been in these areas before, the likes of Kayla, Tori, Vic, these players that have been through finals, they've won championships before, whether it be here or at their club land, you know, HC level, that sort of thing, they've done it. Some of these uh, New Zealand Māori girls probably haven't been through that experience yet. They haven't been to the highest highs yet to, uh, you know, have to win a final. And it is heartbreaking. It's tough to lose when you've gone through the tournament unbeaten to get taken down in the end. But you're yeah. right, experience plays a huge part in actually getting over the line in the final. Yeah, and, and can I mention also too, Brad, that the way that the New Zealand set up the tournaments now is that these girls don't actually have many opportunities to experience loss, yep. disappointment, when to compose yourself. So, I mean, they've got some things running against them, but man, their skill and what they displayed out there isn't one of them. It's just they've got to keep going, they've got to keep learning how to hold a game. Yep. Yeah, absolutely, and they'll be better for it. These girls here have, like you said, probably not had a lot of times where they've had to stand up and be the leaders in this sort of game. They'll have older players that they play with or more mature uh, teammates. This time you're looking at girls like Holly Hilton Jones. Hey, stand up and be a leader. Murphy Phillips, Roy Mata Brown, you're only 19, but stand up and lead this team through a final. And though it didn't come off today, they're going to be better for it. Yeah, and against like 30-year-old women yep. who have been doing this for a long time, yep. you know. So, really well done by them. Yeah, and, uh, you know, don't take anything away from this Heritage Barbarian side. Like we said, we saw the shots on goal. Oh, that was beautiful, man. We saw the penalty goal uh, discrepancy, uh, penalty shot, penalty corner discrepancies. They had the advantage over the Smaldi side for most of the game. Like you say, sooner or later, one had to make its way through. And, and look, they got there in the end. Riley Grills, she'll be the, the toast of the town. Uh, and well deserved. It's not her first goal for the tournament. She's been exciting all weekend. And we're going to throw down now to Harley, uh, who is turf side. He's catching up with the winning captain, Tori Val. Harley. Hey guys, and we're back with the winning heritage captain, uh, Tori. Obviously, the comeback queens, another goal late in the piece. How are you feeling with that one? Did you know that you always had it in the bag? Uh, no, we definitely did not know that we had that in the bag. bag. It was a, a tough fight and it always is against Maldives, always good hockey against them. Um, but yeah, it was pretty. we were pretty happy with that goal in the last. We just like to keep everyone on their seats, you know. And uh, you did say that you were happy that you were going to get the uh, chance for revenge. Uh, all the more the sweeter that you actually got that in the end. Yeah, yeah. we just said that after our loss against Maldives um, on Saturday. We, we said it's probably for the best and you know, um, came out today and fixed a few things, so yeah, showed. So obviously going forward you and the Heritage team, try to figure all that out, um, so then what now we're going to do is, we're looking at having a, a Pacifica team back in next year, yeah. so you're going to be working hard on getting the numbers right? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, um, Heritage is always our favourite tournament um, as a Pacifica player and we um, were pretty gutted that there wasn't a team this year because it just brings a whole different vibe to the tournament. But it was such a good experience playing for Heritage and look forward to seeing the Pacifica teams back next year, yeah. Oh, well, congratulations, <laughs> Corey. So well much. done. Thank you. And i got another one from Fiji. Now, I'm going to butcher your name, but can I get you to pronounce it correctly for me, please? Atera. Atera. Yes. Well, welcome to New Zealand. You did amazingly today, obviously winning. Um, you picked the correct team because obviously the Indian girls uh, shouldn't do too well this yeah. morning. Um, so coming from Fiji, was it only for this? Did you get to see family or were you just coming over for just just for the hockey? Mainly it was just coming over for the hockey. Um, being here for the experience has been amazing. And yeah, we got to see family and friends in between. So that has been, it, it, it has been an amazing trip for us. And we've had the young lady from uh, the Indian uh, side and she said that uh, hopefully next year they can try and bring a Fijian team. Is that going to be the plan that you're going to go back and talk about this tournament and hopefully bring them back? Absolutely, absolutely. We hope that um, us coming up this trip will encourage the, the teams back home to try and put a team together to bring over and um, experience some Kiwi hockey compared to our normal island style hockey. Yeah, i got to admit, I love the island style. It's very fast, very fast paced. Um, is there anybody back home that you want to give a shout out to, a club, home, village? Uh, yeah, shout out to the Ventures hockey team. Um, we hope that uh, we can, we know hockey is dying back home, but we hope that we will build it up together and that this year 
uh, it'll be a better year for hockey back home in Fiji. Oh, thank you very much. See you later. <laughs> And as you can see there, we'll, we'll finally Can't let the players get in. back in for their photo. They've been waiting for the last six minutes to get that photo done. Uh, so awesome to hear from Tori and from Ateda. Uh, look at them. They're all smiles there. They deserve it in the end. The Heritage Barbarians are your 2024 New Zealand Heritage Hockey Championships. Getting home 1-0 over the New Zealand Junior Māori team. What a final. What an epic way to finish the women's tournament. Fitting, I think, that uh, it was so tight and was so close. Uh, but congratulations to all four teams this year. We can't wait to see what it may look like in the future, whether that four becomes six um, or what might happen with Heritage Hockey in 2024. Though we're not quite finished for our tournament, we've got the men's final coming up right after this. It's a two o'clock start, so make sure you get back here before 2 p.m. Uh, to see the New Zealand Indian men take on the New Zealand Fiji boys. So for those that are out there supporting, uh, make sure you get your curry finished up, get your carver bowls cleaned. It's going to be a big one here as the Fijian boys take on the Indians in the men's final at 2 p.m. I've been Brad Pittman, joined by Audio Hippie. Thank you all for joining us. See you on the next one.